yum 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 Good evening and welcome to Monroe House, former home of Prime Minister Monroe. Inside all the rooms are named after dead dignitaries in our province's political history, and tonight, someone else must die. It's the season finale of One Chef, One Critic. Carl Wells and Steve Watson are hosting a special murder mystery party. Already, One Chef, One Critic are inside, deeply involved in a murder mystery plot, and one of them is unsure why. At this very moment, Chef Steve Watson is in the kitchen with the folks from Red Oak Cater. Carl Wells is meeting with the wine experts okay, in the lab. Guys, I've got my script here, and um, first murder after the second course, okay? We're gonna kill off Steve. <laughs> uh, oh, and I brought my ka karaoke machine for oh. later. <laughs> Should be a blast. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> fondue, fondue. Uh, what are we drinking? Hopefully not this stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, the night is young and someone must die. The guests are here, let the feast begin. We hope you enjoy the season finale of One Chef, One Critic, and One Murderer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please allow me to introduce our host for this evening, Chef Steve Watson and food critic Carl Wells. One Chef, One Critic. And I'd also like to introduce our guests for this evening, Big Tom, radio personality from K-Rock. How am I going to get this bologna out of my pocket? I kind of brought it as a joke, but now I can smell it. Shelley Neville, opera singer. I hope that was a karaoke machine I saw on the way in here. <laughs> and T.A. Loeffler, university professor, climber of mountains, and motivational speaker. Hmm, of all the people here, I think I'm most likely to survive. The Honorable Yvonne Jones, leader of the official opposition, province of Newfoundland and Labrador. No one here's got the guts to take me on. Ron Ellsworth, Deputy Mayor of the City of St. John's. It's a food show. It only makes sense somebody would die of food poisoning. Boy, it better be worth it. Welcome, everyone. Yes, indeed. Welcome, everybody. It's great to see you all here this evening for our finale episode of One Chef, One Critic. And you know, I can't believe that we've actually completed 30 episodes. Well, I can believe it's 30 episodes, especially alongside of One Critic. Yes, well, Steve, we, uh, we really don't need to go there, do we? Besides, it's not in the script. What script? Always about the script. Uh, well, we have a beautiful meal for you this evening. Chef Andrew Sinyard of Red Oak Catering has prepared a three-course dinner, and we're going fondue tonight. And we're going to start with the cheese fondue. We've got a beautiful Emmental and Gruyere cheese, and we're going to use some croutons to dip, and uh, what better way to have uh, a party? Our wine tonight was recommended by our wine expert, Andrea Monder. It's a Monkey Bay Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Well, it's really nice of you to have us for dinner, Steve and Carl. But then again, I guess it's a great way for you to get rid of some of the characters that you don't want on your show next season. Look, it's a brilliant idea. And I don't know why we don't do more of these murder mysteries in the workplace. So, uh, Carl, what's with the butler? I haven't seen him on the show before. Uh, yeah, because he's got me to do all the work. Well, actually, uh, I just hire him when I need a little extra help. Is it true that all the rooms in this house is actually named after dead politicians? Boy, this is delicious. Does that kind of scare you? Oh, of course not. Nothing scares me, Ron Ellsworth. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, folks. Uh, <clears throat> this wasn't in the script. Uh, I think our production cues are off, so. Okay. Just... Yeah, we so what? Should I go? There's no script. There's no council. We've got no script. I wonder what he's getting on with. I can't believe we can't even get lighting cues straight. Oh, great. Andrew? Andrew? He's dead. He's dead. This is not in the script. He wasn't supposed to die. Do either of you know anything about this? No. He was uh, supposed to go to the bathroom. Oh, bathroom. Yeah. Leave it to Andrew. 
Leave it to Andrew. He was supposed to throw a to monkey wrench into everything. He was supposed to help us with the wine. It wasn't in the script. Well, did either of you get his wine selections yeah, before he called? I got them. Don't worry about that. That's fine. Well, at least that's something. Would you like me to take out the body? Fine. Take out the body. Um, listen, by the way, good job on the uh, wine selections on the first course. Thank you. Oh, well, what's uh, Steve drinking, by the way? I don't know. I don't know what Steve is drinking. Okay, we'll find I've out. I've got a room full of guests in there. I've got to get back. I don't think Andrew read my script. Stop it with this Andrew business. Only real people can die. Dead? Is anyone dead? Well, uh, actually, I didn't want to make a big deal about this, but uh, uh, <clears throat> Andrew Facey is dead. Who the hell's Andrew Facey? Um, you know Andrew Facey. That's the blind guy with glasses on the show. The guy from uh, NLC. The wine guy. The wine guy. Who would want to kill the wine guy? Yes, who would want to kill Andrew? I don't know. I guess somebody didn't like him. Come on, I know CPR. Let's go look at the body. Yeah. Well, I think it's a little late for that. <laughs> Pretty convenient. Carl Wells. Fatty's missing. Mm. What did he die of anyway? I don't know. I came in, he was slumped over the bar. There was blood dribbling from his mouth. The Russian cook comes in, says, Do you want me to get rid of the body? And I said, Fine, get rid of the body. The Russian cook? Why would you give the body to the Russian cook? Where did he put him? In a cooler, I suppose. Looks like he had a drink, at least before he died. Mm -hmm. mm. Jeremy, uh, taste it. Uh, you're not allowed to drink wine on Rogers TV, Ron. You can sniff it, though. French Cross Pillar Estates. Hmm. Oh. Well, wine great. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to invite you back to the dining room for a selection of full-body wines presented oh. by our oh. experts, Jeremy Bonia and Andrea Moll. Nice. Okay. Yes, oh. yes. Well, I don't think I'll be drinking any more wine this evening. You know, Steve, uh, my stomach doesn't feel that good. Shall I tell Chef Sinyard we're ready for the second course? No, I think I'll go and speak to Andrew and uh, Handy's Russian friend. And you take care of the guests. Yeah, I think I will. You're probably scared to death anyway. Why was the evil Russian cook apprentice so eager to drag the body off? Will Carl's belly aching really amount to anything fatal? Will the guests drink the same wine? Stay with us for those answers on one chef, one critic, and one murderer. It's important to confirm a minimum of six guests for your at-home murder mystery party. Be sure to include specific character details on each guest invitation, for example, whether or not to come in costume. The character background should explain why each guest will be there. The invitation is also a good place to list rules and any other additional information. Other than telling who your character is, it is important not to discuss your character with anyone else before the game starts. If you do so, you're likely to give away certain secrets and spoil the game, mainly for yourself. Andrew, who's the Russian with the chef's uniform on? I have no idea. It must be someone with Steve. Well, Andrew, that was great. That appetizer there with the fondue and the cheese and the blue cheese, absolutely gorgeous. Good and I can see it. Well, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's all in color now. You know? <laughs> so, um, but I can see it now for our main course with a wonderful array, I see. So for the, uh, the fondues, I see, instead of using a broth, we're using white wine. Right, but you can use any broth. And uh, we're also going to be using some oil to cook the meat. So what kind of meats have we got there? I've got some uh, beef tenderloin right here. I've got some uh, rack of veal with uh, fresh thyme. And right there, I've got some uh, rack of lamb, which has been deboned and uh, marinated with some uh, rosemary and garlic. That looks absolutely beautiful. And of course, with our vegetables, we're going to be putting that in a white wine broth. Right. And uh, we've got some shrimp in there to go there as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think without further ado, Jen, why don't we just take it into the, uh, into the room there? 
Uh, Steve, can I have a word? There's something downstairs I wouldn't mind showing you. It's a little, uh, anyway, just come and have a look. Okay, let's go downstairs then. So everybody, we've moved from the cheese course now. We have the beef and vegetable course. We've got the hot pot and we've got the boiling oil. So we've got some beautiful wines that we can uh, share with you for that. I have a beautiful rosé from the Loire Valley. It's called Touraine. It's a blend of Gamay and Pinot d'Assis, which is absolutely beautiful. And uh, for the meat course, we're doing, well, you've all heard of Argentina Malbec. This is the homeland of Malbec from Cahors, Croix de Maine. Jeremy, Andrew, you're both Andrew's friends. Figured you'd be more concerned about this. Yeah, it's uh, heartbreaking, but uh, you know, this is a show we're taping, and uh, show business has got to go on, right? The show must go on, so let's get on with it. So what's the story, guys? This isn't looking good on either of you. After all, you were the last to have seen Andrew. Well, well we, we were in the room. Carl was yelling about his script. He was setting up the karaoke machine. You know, Jeremy and I were just putting away the wine, which is what Andrew was supposed to be doing. And then Andrew, Jeremy, asked me to come down to the wine cellar, and, and that's where we lived. That's right. And you know what? Carl was the last person to see Andrew alive because we were downstairs working. Andrew had to go to the bathroom, and of course Carl had to have the karaoke machine going. Captain Karaoke. Look, <clears throat> I was in the room with Andrew. We set up the karaoke machine. He was drinking a glass of wine. We sang a song together. I left the room. I met Steve outside. We came in here and started the evening. So who gave him the wine? What do you mean, who gave him the wine? He's a sommelier. He probably has wine in his pockets, for all I know. This is some stunt. Jeremy Boney, of all the people, of all the people who'd be likely to kill Andrew Facey, it would be you. <gasps> now that's just stupid. Andrew Facey was the least of my worries. Although I do believe uh, he was uh, a little upset with you. It was only last night I got a text from him saying how snippy you were with him after he did you a favor. Look, I wasn't snippy. He brought me a bottle of wine. It was Chateau Neuf de Pop. And I said, that is the grossest yes, thing yes. I've ever tasted Carl, in my life. I was about to agree with you on that until I saw the camera I, rolling and your, I have a job one, to a, one of your people recommended that to me. Well, you know what? It, they won't do that in the future. I think Chateau Neuf de Pop is a very, very overrated wine. And uh, I said I didn't like it. And then later on I called him and I said, by the way, make sure you wear something nice. Yeah, tomorrow. no, I think you said dress for a funeral because this was going to be your last show. I knew you would try and kill a character off this show. Andrew Facey was one of the most valuable members of this show. I mean, he, he was, he was a, a, one of the best wine experts east of Montreal. Besides, we were karaoke buddies. You know, I watched this show, and I know there have been some testy moments, like the time you caught Andrew in your wine cellar with your karaoke machine. The rules are, nobody touches my karaoke machine. This is sacred. It's my karaoke machine, okay? <laughs> Everybody knows you hate people at your karaoke machine. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the time you left Andrew in the cellar? Oh. Andrew, sorry, I, I, I got tied up with Linda Swain. She was telling this really funny story about Carl, Iceland. Carl, Carl, stop right now. Do you know who I am? I'm the NLC's Senior Product Knowledge Consultant. I yeah, don't have time I, to be down here in your basement waiting. Uh, this is crazy. Andrew Facey and I were on good terms. I'm telling you. You didn't care that Andrew's dead. That Jeremy Bone yet? I think you're right. I mean, after all, when you get a babe like Andrea, in the wine cellar, come on guys, you can have too many packs in the hen house. And you look at that guy with the Newfoundland Liquor Corporation, that senior technician analyst that sips and promotes all the wine product. I think he's got something to you do You know, with this. Jeremy, they're making some really good points here. As a matter of fact, of all the people who'd be killed here this evening, I figured Steve would be the first to go and I thought, Jeremy's gonna be the one to kill him, because you know why? Ever since this show started, you've been trying to weasel your way into Steve's role as a cook. Sure, but uh, you know, I can cook circles around Steve. Mm -hmm. But Steve's not dead yet. Andrew is, and you killed Andrew. Of all the people here, you killed Andrew because of your fussy wine palate and your karaoke thing. You know what? 
In my original script, I had you killing Steve Watson. But maybe that was too predictable. Come on, Jeremy, let's go back to the wine cellar where we belong. What's with that creepy Russian guy? I don't know. I think he's with the caterers. Mm. Steve, Carl switched places with you for some reason. Oh, oh, thank you very much, Raphael. I switched places because if anybody poisoned my wine, I knew I wouldn't be drinking it, and neither would Steve, because he doesn't drink. There goes Carl, think of himself again. Anyway, on to more important things. I was talking to Andrew Singer in the kitchen, and he said he found something down in the basement in the freezer. So he took me down there, and uh, he said there was a body down there. And when we got down there, there was nobody, nobody. Another one of your Andrew known things disappearing. I think you've just made <coughs> all this up. He was slumped over, dead on the bar, and Raphael dragged him out. If you don't believe me, let's get Raphael in here. Raphael! Raphael! It seems like Mr. Raphael's taken a cab. Too bad he was such a nice guy. You know, it's not looking good for the lot of you. Carl, Steve, the wine experts. I mean, they're just all looking pretty guilty to me. That's true, and you know what? I don't think I've seen Steve and those wine experts in the same room together since That's we started true. this evening. That's right. Yes, and I suppose they were both right here. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. An announcement. Steve doesn't think the wine experts exist. He thinks that Andrew, Andrea, and Jeremy are figments of my imagination. He thinks they're my imaginary friends. He's wine, gnomes. Wine gnomes, yes, wine gnomes. Well, I've got news for you, because they were right here, and all of these people saw them. And we were all here when the body disappeared. But you weren't. I was in the kitchen. Mr. Carl Wells, you are under arrest <gasps> for the murder what? of Andrew Facey. Oh, really? <laughs> Bill, what are you talking about? This is ridiculous. Bill, I brought you here to play an undercover cop to make the arrest. I'm not the murderer. It's not my script, remember? My script? Well, be that as may, but we found this packet of poison what was oh, in your no. coat pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how do you explain that, eh? Oh, so you're yes. under arrest. Give me your hands, I don't sir. Know how I have to put you in the cops. Put in the cops. Put in the cops. The poison was planted in my pocket. Well, we'll see how the judge feels about all of that. <laughs> the poison was planted. Look, this is crazy. Bill, listen to me. You can't take me to the lockup now. You no. Because if you do, that's it. you will ruin the party. Well, you're taking you to the lockup, and the dessert is served up Don't you realize exactly this is the part where we, we find out who the murderer is? Right? Is Carl Wells really a murderer? Does Chef Steve Watson really think there's no such thing as wine efforts? Will Big Tom actually pull out his pocket bologna and dip it in the chocolate fondue? Please stay tuned for the conclusion of One Chef, One Critic and one murderer. So the trick to doing well at a murder mystery party, whether you are trying to solve the murder or just achieve your other objectives, is to talk to people. You should never use weapons for props. It's just too dangerous. Anyone passing may not realize you're only playing a game. Other than weapons, props are fine. For more information on tonight's One Chef, One Critic, and One Murderer episode, go to centraldairies.com. Jeremy, what are you doing with my karaoke machine? You know I don't like people using my karaoke machine when I'm not around. It's not done. She's not dead by. Look, his eyes are blinking. <coughs> of course I'm not dead. It's just your script was too predictable, Carl. And everybody here thought the same thing, and they didn't want you to be the star of the show tonight and steal all the glory, but once again, it did, and you did. We go. Did everybody try the wine? It's Rose Regali, sparkling mm. rosé, roses, oh, it's nice. chocolate. Wait a minute. Listen. Why is it that everybody hates my script? Jeremy, you don't like my script either? 
Who cares about your script? <laughs> Listen, let's go back to the best part of the script when uh, you got arrested for murdering Andrew Facey. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. Yeah. It was good. Bill, I brought you here to help with my script, remember? My script. I remember, Carl, but you know, I gotta tell you, I wasn't keen on your script either. I'd really, yeah. like, before we go to the lockup, yeah. I need to. I need you to tell us about the poison. Yeah, come on, that was it, Carl. Yeah, 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 yeah the poison. Better. Come on. Tell us about it, girl. Tell us about it. You want to hear that? Yeah. You need to get it off your chest. Oh, poison. Oh, yeah. Come on, tell us. Come on, Carl. Yes, Carl. In your script, you had Jeremy kill me off, so you get all the limelight. And then you had your butler friend here put me in jail, so yeah. I couldn't throw any yeah. parties in the cellar. Oh, come couldn't on. Couldn't drink any of her wine, and then I couldn't come upstairs and have any good meals with you guys ever. Wait a minute, Steve. Jeremy, Andrea. You three were in on this together all the time. And I didn't even think you believed they existed. Who am I kidding, Carl? Don't you think people don't know that I watch the show on a weekly basis? Don't you think I don't know that one of you would have one of your gnomes kill me off in this mystery? Steve! Steve! Jeremy, come on! <laughs> I didn't mean to set either of you guys up! It was a joke. I mean, for heaven's sakes, it's a script. It's a script. Yeah. Well, who's laughing now, Carl? Who is laughing now? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we did it. All right. Yes. I got our tickets, boarding passes. Where's our bags? Who needs bags? Let's go. Let's go. Final boarding call to sunny Mexico. <laughs> All passengers. Andrew is, because he was clever enough to fake his own death. Das bedonia! I knew the evil Russian cook was in on this. Oh, so, so it was Andrew and Raphael. Yeah. It was. It was, I, it was one of those guys that, that dropped the poison in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. What were you doing going through my pockets anyway, Bill? It's not like. It's not like there was a sign that said, "Don't go in Carl's pockets." Oh, I get it. Now I know why the karaoke machine is here. You guys are going to sing a duet. What about "Don't Stop Believing"? Great idea, Shelley. <laughs> Jeremy, I think we're gonna get along just fine. Back off, Watson. I'm not that fond of mustaches either. Well, I guess I've been had. Well, Jeremy Bonia, I'll tell you one thing. If that karaoke machine is damaged, my friend, you are replacing it. Otherwise, I'm changing the locks on the pool. <laughs> now get me out of these handcuffs, Bill. Uh, no. What do you mean, no? Come on, uh, no. get me out of- No, no, I'm having way too much fun. <laughs> Oh, come on, guys. We got the chocolate fondue here. That's why we're here. Let's get into the chocolate. Yeah. 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 Come on. Well, folks, that's it for the season finale of One Chef, One Critic. We've had a fabulous time. And by the way, an excellent giveaway on tonight's show. We have an at-home murder mystery kit so you can stage your very own murder mystery in your house. <laughs> Before we go, we want to thank our excellent sponsors this season on One Chef, One Critic. That's Leon's Furniture, Coleman's, John Hutton Realty, Purity Factories, and catering this evening done by Red Oak Catering. Yes, and a special thank you as well to everybody here at Monroe House on Forest Road for their cooperation, and especially Carolyn and Barbara. And I want to thank Central Dairies and Steve for being on board this year, and our volunteers were absolutely sensational. And that's it for this season of... One Chef. One Critic. Oh!